So we're talking about collisions, and I have to show you this way to model elastic collisions, and it's going to be awesome. Yes, there's Python involved. You know there's going to be Python involved. Don't act like you're surprised. So imagine I have these two objects moving together. Maybe even this one's stationary and this one comes in. It doesn't really matter. How do I like model that collision? We saw in the, well, at least I showed in a video for the moon orbiting the Earth, if I, as long as I include both objects in the system, then that gravitational force that the Earth pulls on the moon, also the moon pulls on the Earth, and so they both have a change momentum to conserve momentum. So the moon orbits the Earth, and it makes the Earth jiggle a little bit, but that is what we do to conserve momentum. And the key there was that the force on this object was equal and opposite to the force on this object. So as long as we make a force between these two that's equal and opposite, then we can get the whole thing to work, right? We can make them collide and we can model the motion just using forces, not just the final momentum. Instead of just saying, what's the momentum before and after, we're gonna, we're gonna have a whole collision. It's gonna be great. Okay, and I'm gonna do it a couple different ways, start off as simple as possible. But what I want to do is to have these move together and if they're, uh, surfaces overlap, I'm going to make a spring force that pushes them apart. Okay, does that make sense? So if they, the more they overlap, the greater that force is. And it doesn't really matter as long as the force on this is equal and opposite to the force on this, then momentum will be conserved. Let's just set it up on the board and then we'll code it up and then we'll run it and it's going to be great and Yes. Okay, so here I have an object right here. It's going to move towards that. I do need, I'm going to actually make these things. They're both going to have a radius. I'm going to have them the same size. Uh, mass A, mass B. I'm going to pick some values. Let's say mass A is 0 0.1 kilograms. Uh, mass B, just to be different, is uh, 0 0.07 kilograms. And then it has an initial velocity vector. I'm just going to pick that at, you know, 0.3 meters per second. So VA1. That's the velocity of A beforehand is the vector 0. Point, what did I say? 3, let's do 3 x hat meters per second. I don't know. And that one's at rest. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to break this into short time intervals. During each time, and this is going to be a really short time interval. Let's say delta T is 0. 0.001 seconds. Because that collision could take a really, really short amount of time and I don't want to mess it up. I mean, it'll still work but I want, it to be, I want it to be as good as possible. So during that short time interval, I can calculate the force on this object and use that to update its velocity. Now, in the past, we calculated the acceleration, but remember the momentum principle says this, the net force is the change in momentum with respect to time. So that's P2, I'm gonna call this for object A. So this is gonna be PA2 minus PA1 over delta T. I can use that to update the momentum during a short time interval. It doesn't really matter if it's collided or not, right? Or in the middle of a collision. So if I solve this for PA2, PA2 is PA1 plus F, I'll just leave it as F, delta T. Once I update the momentum, I can update the position of mass A. So this is the, using the velocity, but here I have the momentum. So it looks a little bit different. Ra2 equals Ra1 plus Pa2 over Ma delta T. So that's the velocity. So I'm gonna update the velocity. So I'm gonna calculate the force. I'm gonna update the momentum. I'm gonna update the velocity, the position, and then I'm gonna do it over again. And I need to do it for both masses, just like I did for the, Earth and Moon system. Now, what about that force? So the force, what we're going to say is if this is going to be the radius, I'll just call that R, and so this is the other one, it has a radius R. So this is A and B. If the distance between these, I'll call this vector R. And that one I'll call just the position of the ball, right? So if this R, R is going to be equal to uh, RB, the position of B, minus the position of A. If the magnitude of that, if the magnitude of R is less than um, twice the radius, then there is a collision. And I can set uh, the compression amount, I'll call this S. S is going to be equal to 
uh, 2r minus the magnitude of r. Right? That's how much it compressed. That's s. And then I can use that to calculate the force. F is k times s. That's my normal spring force. I do need a value for the spring constant. Let's go with 500. I don't know. I'm picking something here. K is 500 newtons per meter. Okay, let's just make this. We're going to break it into parts. Number one, I'm going to make two balls. I'm going to make them move. That's it. And then I'll add in the stuff about calculating the force. So let's jump over to Python and get started. Web v Python. I'm going to put in my masses here. Um, so let's say MA is 0 0.1. MB is 0 0.07. K the spring constant I said was what? Did I say 500? Yeah, I did say 500. Okay, now let's just make our masses. So M, oh, let's see. I'm going to call it ball A. Ball A is a sphere. Uh, and now I don't want to put these too far apart, right? Because I want them to be able to move in, in, in and collide. So I'm going to put ball B at the origin. And this one I'll put at, I'm thinking like a ball like that. Yeah, so let's put it at a position of, negative, oh gosh, I'm having trouble thinking. Let's see, the radius, let's say the radius is 0 0.03, which is kind of big, but that's fine. So let's put, let's put this at negative uh, 0.1, which might be too, too big. Position equals, I jumped ahead because I was thinking about how big it should be, uh, 0, 0. Radius equals r, color equals color, dot cyan. Uh, cyan and magenta and yellow should really great on a black background, so that's just why I picked that. And then let's have it make trail equals true. And then here's my other object, uh, ball b equals sphere, position equals vector 0, 0, 0. Is that the origin? Uh, the radius is r. The color is color.yellow. You can pick your own colors. And then also make trail equals true. Okay, now I need to, um, I need my time and my time step of 0 0.001. Now I also need the initial momentum if I'm gonna change these things. Now I am going to use uh, something that's very useful and I haven't always done because I try to make things as simple as possible. I'm going to assign the momentum as a property of the object. Uh, I could do that with the mass too, but let's do it like this. So I'm going to say uh, ball A dot P. So I'm going to assign the property P as the momentum of ball A. And that would just, I can keep track of things a little bit easier. It's, it's just a better way of doing it. So it's going to be the mass A times the vector. I already gave it a vector of what did I say? It was 0.3? Yeah. 0 0.3. 0, 0. So that's his momentum. And then I do need uh, the momentum for ball B. So ball B dot P is just going to be, let's put it as MB times vector 0, 0, 0. Yeah, I know you don't have to do that, but I did anyway. Okay. So l I'm just going to move these. That's all I'm going to do. So while T is less than, let's just run it for a certain amount of time. Let's run it for two seconds. Uh, rate 1,000. So it's going to run in real time because I'm going to do 1,000 calculations per second at uh, 1 1,000th of a second time step. So number one, I'm going to calculate the force even though it's zero. So I'm going to say F, um, and let's calculate the force on A. So FA is going to be the vector 0, 0, 0. Right? I'm going to, I want a force. Now I'm going to update the momentum uh, for both objects. So ball A dot P equals ball A dot P. And you got to emphasize that. You got to say A when you do that. Plus F A times C T. Right? So that's the updating momentum. Now let's update the momentum of ball B, which I know it seems silly because that's a zero, but it will make more sense later. Ball B dot P equals ball B dot P minus F A times D T. Right? So whatever the force on A is, the force on B is equal and opposite. So I have that negative sign there. Now I'm going to update the positions of both balls. Ball A dot P O S. I'm going to, well, I'm not going to do that right now. Equals ball A, no, no, ball 
a remember dot pos is the actual position so i'm changing the actual position of the ball to make the whole animation work uh ball a dot pos plus ball a dot p times dt divided by m a and then i need to do the same thing for the other mass ball b dot pos ball oops look at that a b dot pos plus ball b dot p times dt divided by m b now i just need to update time t or otherwise it will run forever t equals t plus dt let's just see if this runs uh, you never know what's going to happen because it's live okay i like it obviously i didn't need to run that long let's just run it for one second but notice what's happening is it maybe happens a little fast i'm going to move this back a little bit let's move this at uh, 0.2 uh, let's make that at 0.2 and let's slow it down a little bit uh, just to 0.2 oh and then it's only going to get there in one second okay so let's run it for two seconds again I'm just playing around with the values here okay so the cyan ball starts right there and it just passes right through the yellow ball right I didn't there was no changes in force so what's to stop it but it did move so it's a good place to start and it's a good time to actually save this thing which I didn't do ball collision 24 because it's 2024 I forget I've done it more than once okay so now what we want to do is to say do they collide is there a collision to do that what I want to do is to first calculate this vector r and it's going to be the vector from a to b so that's ball b dot pos minus ball a dot pos so every time I change the position I'm going to redo that now I'm going to put in a conditional statement I'm going to say is that less than 2r so if the magnitude of the vector r is less than 2 times r then do the following so I'll just set the force fa fa is going to be equal to let's see um, okay I want fa to be a vector and I have to deal with the uh, let's let's calculate s anyway so s is going to be equal to what did I say it was 2r minus the magnitude of a which I know it's kind of redundant but 2 times r minus the magnitude of r <clears throat> yep so when I put <clears throat> this as negative k times s which would be pushing it in the negative x direction I could do that right um, but I don't have it it's not a vector s is not a vector k is not a vector so I have a little bit of a trouble there now r is a vector from a to b so I'm going to do this it may not be the most making sense but I'm going to say the norm R. So norm R is a unit vector in the direction of R. And then so negative means it's pushing back. I think that will work. Okay. So if you look at this code, notice it's very important up here to set the force equal to zero every time I start with the loop over and then check if that force should be there or not. So otherwise, I'm going to always have, once I have a force, it will always be a force. And I don't want to do that. Um, but I think that should work now. Um, yeah, let's just try it. Look at that. That's amazing. I'm so happy. Okay. Let's just check some stuff. Is momentum conserved? Is kinetic energy conserved? So let's do momentum first. G1 equals graph. Uh, title equals, I'm just going to say momentum. I'm trying to make it short. Uh, X title equals time y title equals uh, I'm just gonna say px it's the x momentum and I won't even put the units uh, width equals 400 height equals 150 I usually do 200 but I'm gonna do 150 because I want to plot I'm gonna make two graphs so I'm gonna plot ball x momentum ball b moment ball a momentum ball b momentum and the total so let's do that f a p equals g curve color equals color dot blue I could put a label on that but I don't want to f b p equals g curve color equals color dot red so on white backgrounds like the graphs uh, red blue purple show up the best that's just me f t p total is going to be equal to g curve color equals color dot purple I like it so 
Okay, so down here I need to actually plot those things. Let's just put it at the end. FAP dot plot T uh, ball a dot p dot x. I can't plot ball a dot p because it's a vector, so I have to plot the x component of that. F b p dot plot t ball b dot p dot x, and then f t p dot plot t ball a dot p dot x plus ball b dot p dot x. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, there's that. Look at that. So here's the total momentum before that purple line. It stays constant. When they collide, the blue one decreases in momentum. The red increases momentum by the same amount, and the sum is the same. That's butamous. Okay, let's just plot the kinetic energy just to make sure. Um, we, we have a little bit more work here, so let's say uh, G2. So in WebVPython, you can make multiple graphs, um, and you can assign which curves go to which graphs, but you put if you put them in order, it works. So I'm just going to copy this just to make things a little bit easier. And then I'm going to call that G2. And then I'm going to call that kinetic energy. And this is going to be KE. Now, KE is a scalar, so I don't have to worry about uh, the components. And then F, F, A, F, A, K equals, let's just copy all this. And then I'm going to ch change this to K. K, K, okay. So I need to calculate the kinetic energies. Uh, one way you can do that is momentum squared over twice the mass. It's the same as one half mv squared. So let's calculate the kinetic energies. K A is gonna be mag uh, ball A dot P squared divided by two times M A. And then K B is mag ball B dot P squared divided by two times mb, and then I can plot it. F a k dot plot t k a, f b k dot plot t k b, and then f t k, I did call it that, right? Oops, yeah. FTK dot plot T K A plus K B. Let's run it. Collides. There's that graph. And see, so I made it a little bit skinnier so that we could almost see both of them on there. And kinetic energy is also conserved. Kind of. Kind of. Right? It's not actually conserved. Because right here is the purple curve and then it goes down and then back up. So during the actual collision, there is some energy that's transferred into the spring potential energy between those two things, and so the total kinetic energy decreases. But if you have a very, very, very short time interval, then that's fine, it does decrease. Okay, now I'm gonna show you one more super awesome thing. Let's go back to the code. Now, here's ball A. It's on the x-axis. What if I just do this? Um, 0 0.01. So I'm gonna, instead of having them collide head on, they're gonna be a glancing collision. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, I don't know. Let's just run it and find out. I know what's gonna happen. Look at that. So because this force is a vector but that it draws a line between the two balls, then the force is gonna push in the direction of the collision. So we can do two-dimensional collisions too. We can still check and see if momentum is conserved. Yes, it is. We can check if kinetic energy is conserved. Yes, it is. So you can imagine all the different things. You can have both balls moving. You can change the mass. You can do whatever you want. As long as those forces are the same, then you're gonna have conservation momentum. As long as the collision is short, you're gonna have uh, conservation of kinetic energy. It's an elastic collision. Um, now, what if you want to make an inelastic collision? That's a little bit more difficult to model. It's not impossible. Uh, what if you want to make a uh, just a collision that's not inelastic where they don't stick together and where they don't conserve kinetic energy? Again, more complicated. But I think this one shows the power of numerical calculations that you can make this kind of collision. It's not that difficult. Okay.
Hope you enjoyed that. That's the end.